Hey everyone, welcome to Whiteboard Friday. No, I am not Rand, my name is Dan Shore, and I'm an SEO Moz associate. I'm here in the Mozplex for the uh, MozCon conference. I'm very excited. I just flew in a little bit earlier today, and I'm going to do the Whiteboard Friday this week. So today we're going to talk about the top 10 Twitter tactics times three. So I've got three lists here of 10 tactics for each category that we're going to go through. Those categories first are attention, that is getting attention onto your profile or who you are, just getting noticed by people that don't follow you. The second is audience, so that is getting people to follow you and then maintaining that audience. And the third is action, so that is getting people to take actions from your tweets, from the people that are following you. So let's get right into the first one. So for attention, the first thing I would say is you want to set up a profile that looks professional, that has personality, and that stands out in a way that you will get noticed. That might be a nice looking photo, that might be a clear username, not something with uh, a lot of like underscores or weird digits in it or things that aren't spaces. You want to have it be something that people will instantly recognize as your name. Uh, second, you want to contrast what's happening out in Twitter a little bit and kind of stand out. So I'll give you a few examples. Uh, one might be, uh, suppose, uh, <laughs> so I, tad nervous. I'm not going to stop though. We're doing this in one take. Uh, <laughs> so to contrast and stand out a little bit, if a lot of people around you are tweeting things that are really long, like using the full 140 characters, if you do a lot of short tweets, you're going to stand out more because you're going to look different than everyone else. Also, if you do what I like to call, what I've been trying to do, double tweeting, and that is I will tweet once, that's kind of the prep tweet to get people's attention, and then a second tweet to actually do the action, hello, to get people to do the action, or actually that second tweet will have the content that I want people to really notice. Third, indirect mention. So what I mean by this is, suppose you're trying to get an influencer to pay attention to you, right? But you want to use maybe a little bit more of a soft sell sort of tactic. What you can do is if you find an article or something of theirs that you really like, you can tweet that, but just mention it, mention them in it in a way where you're not trying to like get a response or like being really hard sell about it. It's just a little bit of a soft sell. And I think influence especially really appreciate that, especially if you talk about their post and your tweet in an original way and grab their attention. Number four, ask for help. A lot of people say you should help others to get attention, but you can get a lot of attention just by asking for help. And then when you ask for help, ask people to retweet you. Hey, I need to find a programmer for this project. Or, hey, does anybody know the answer to blah, 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 blah and you ask for a retweet and then people start retweeting that, you can get some attention that way. And the other thing this does is this shows people that you're willing to learn, that you know, you're know you out there to get help from other people and try to get better at whatever, whatever it is that you're doing. Number five, helping others. So Will Reynolds has talked a lot in the past about using if this then that, it's I-F-T-T-T, triple T, dot com. Uh, to set up alerts for certain people or certain keywords, when those tweets happen, you'll get a text message or an email or some type of alert, however you want it to be set up, uh, and you'll get that, and so you can react to that right away. Suppose there's a, an influencer, for example, that um, you know maybe needs help with their computer, right? And you can help with computers. Maybe they're maybe you're maybe you're trying to get the attention of somebody that's like a food blogger, and they don't know anything about computers. They they tweet something, hey, I need help with my computer, and then you get a, a text message from Ift, and you can respond to that right away and help that person out. Number six, uh, listen, go away from Twitter and do something, and then come back and deliver. So here's an example. A few months ago, Rand tweeted something actually about IFT. He said, hey, somebody in inbound marketing should write about IFT. It could be this great new inbound marketing thing. So most people might reply to that, oh, yeah, hey, Rand, yeah, I'll write about that. Or like, hey, Rand, do you think this would be a good idea if I do blah, 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 blah. But what I'm saying here is to listen. He's already said he's looking for that content. It might be interesting. I went and wrote that post without asking permission. 
I just went and did it. And then uh, the next day, 24 hours later, I came back, I tweeted it, I said, hey, here's something Rand suggested, and uh, he retweeted it, and that post has done very well. So that's suggestion six. Seven, consistency. Uh, this is kind of like traditional branding in a way, where you know, you're trying to get your logo to be recognized by people instantly, like the Starbucks logo or like the Nike logo, right? You want people to see it and know exactly what it is. This is very much that same mindset. So what I mean by consistency is, if you're trying to get an influencer to notice you, right? You know, you don't want to try to go for that quick sell or that quick reaction or like try to like jump, you know, like it's kind of like approaching a girl right away like too quickly. You know, you want to, um, over time, maybe respond to questions or maybe ask them a question or mention them. And if they see you doing things on a consistent basis and putting out content that's good on a consistent basis, then they're going to notice you. And that's going to be a much stronger type of relationship and type of attention that you will have earned by that consistent action. Number eight. So this is great, actually. So I don't know how many of you have participated in an SEO chat or I think there's a PPC chat. But this is a great way to get attention outside of your existing audience in Twitter. Uh, just, you know, there, I think uh, SEO chat is on Thursday nights. They might have changed it, but it was Thursday nights. Uh, and PPC chat, I think, is Tuesdays. You can go into any of these and just say, hey, what's up? I'm checking it out. You know, get some people to notice you. They're a part of that community. And the great thing about that is you're walking into a built-in community, something on Twitter that's already happening and you're getting like tons of people to notice you right away with that hashtag. Number nine, a little similar. So we're at MozCon now. I think anybody would be really smart to use the MozCon hashtag while they're here in a way where they can get attention. So I'll give you another example. Uh, last summer I was at the Affiliate Summit because I want a free ticket. And as an SEO at an Affiliate Summit, there were a lot of affiliate marketers there, but not many SEOs. So I use the hashtag for the event and tweeted, hey, anybody would like help with SEO, come find me. And that was a perfect way to get people's attention because you're in a conference full of affiliates and you're one of the only SEOs. So you can use hashtags like that very strategically at events, live events. Finally, number 10, uh, retweets from followers that influencers will see. So let me explain that a little more carefully. So I'll give another example. So a year ago when I was first starting out in the public world of SEO, there were a few influencers that I wanted to make sure saw me like Rand and Will Reynolds and Tom Critlow and people like that. I knew that if a few of the people that were already following me retweeted my content, if uh, let's say uh, Tom Critlow was following John Doherty, if John retweeted something of mine, Tom would see it. And the more that happened, the more I would be in front of influencers and not just my immediate audience. And that was done intentionally.